The following is an analysis, interpretation, and summary of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Chapter 11. Walk slowly, but never backwards. Action versus motion. This chapter of At Atomic Habits covers law three of habit formation. Make it easy. How do we make habits easier? So this is the first chapter of that this law. And we're going to go straight into it. Being in motion and taking action aren't the same thing. When you're in motion, you're planning, strategizing, learning. Action, on the other hand, is the type of behavior that will deliver an outcome. A lot of you are in motion right now. A lot of you are watching videos, listening to podcasts, planning, strategizing, learning how to get better. But you ain't actually taking action towards the behavior to get the outcome and the change that you desire. I've gotten trapped in this very frequently in the past. I've mistaken activity for achievement often. I wrote about this in my Dear Alexander self-reflective writings. If you've seen them or read them on my website, you get bogged down in the, in the consumption of information. You listen to podcasts every time you drive somewhere or, or you, you're on the treadmill or you're going for a walk or you're just cooking and like, oh man, I'm consuming so much knowledge and books and information and interesting, thought-provoking things. And you trick yourself and you think, man, I'm learning so much. I'm, 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 really, I'm really growing. I'm really like growing in intelligence and like, man. And, and some part of that is true. It really is some part of it. But you realize that None of that is actually giving a direct outcome to creating the change that you desire in your life. You're not actually doing the thing that you need to do. You're planning, you're learning, you're strategizing, and you're using inspiration from other people to help push you in that direction. But you ain't doing shit. This video, these series... They're great. I hope you enjoy them. But this is me taking action. I'm not strategizing. I'm taking action to create an entire video catalog analysis of what I believe is one of the most profound books I've read, particularly on psychology and habit formation. This is my action. Um, thankfully, gratefully, I'm also learning at the same time because I'm getting to reiterate and, and, and conceptualize and talk and discuss and commentate on a lot of these ideas. Now, I've been on the other end that you've been on. Of course I have. Because I've been the guy who's, you know, wanted to watch that. I watched the entire series of XYZ. I learned a lot. But how much did I really do on the back end of it? And so this is it's really important because we've become obese in consumption. We've become obese in information. I know I did. That's why I had to stop. Stop. Consumption of podcasts and YouTube and books and this and that, and just cultivate the learnings that you have. You, you, you probably know enough. You probably don't, but you probably don't need three hours and four hours of podcasts and consumption of listening and learning and reading every day. Particularly, especially, if you ain't actually getting better doing the thing that you say you want to do. If you look at your day to day, you're actually progressing in the tasks and outcomes that are important to you. If you can say yes to all of it, awesome. Probably on the right path. You're probably using the information you're learning. But I guarantee there's a lot of you who used to be like me and it slows you down. It's enjoyable. Who doesn't love listening to a Joe Rogan podcast? He has some amazing guests on. It can be a fun time. It can be a funny time. It can be also very intellectually stimulating as well. At some, He's taken action. He's in action, you're in motion, I'm in motion by listening to his action. At some point, you gotta flip it and you gotta be the one to take action. Researching a good diet plan is motion. Eating a healthy meal plan is action, like actually doing it. Researching the per the, a great exercise program is an, or a coach is the motion. Hiring them, doing the session is the action. Planning your essay, planning the script for your movie you're writing, or your show you're writing, or the jokes you're writing, planning, thinking about it, that's motion. But until you turn that into action, you are in the same place that you are now.
Now, sometimes you need to set up motion to get into action because it builds momentum. But let's be honest with ourselves. How much time are we wasting in motion that we could just go and take action? You don't need all the information to take action. Nowhere near as much as you think. And sometimes we need to be in motion to plan, like I said, but more often than not, we do it to distract ourselves because motion allows us to feel like we're making progress without running the risk of failure. Isn't that something so many of us are consciously, subconsciously afraid of? Failure or even success. I don't really understand that one. I haven't really like, I know some people feel it. I know I've met people like that. Afraid of success. Whatever it is for you, the motion, the planning is distracting you and tricking you into a facade of making you feel like you're actually, uh, you're running on the treadmill, but really you're just trying to avoid it because you don't want to fail. So being busy in motion is a way we can trick ourselves into delaying or avoiding failure. We're trying to avoid a state. We have the craving, like we talked about in the last chapter, to avoid feeling like a failure, to avoid feeling the emotions associated with failure. What if you reframed it? I'm going to fail. I might fail. You get to fail. What a gift. What a gift it would be if I spent 100 hours, 200 hours on all these videos. What a gift it would be for less than 500 people, less than 1,000 people to watch each one. That's 500 more than zero. That's 1,000 more than zero. What a gift it would be to use that as an opportunity to learn how the landscape of social media, YouTube, and my own creative content, video skills is changing. I don't know, it's like failure is that opportunity. I'd so, it's so easy to, I understand how easy it is to say now. I'm not failing right now, I'm just talking. I'm at a homeostasis, like I'm fine. But when you're actually failing, and when you actually think about failing, of course, it's fear. It's, you don't wanna be the type of person who fails. You don't wanna be a failure. Some people literally identify, avoid, avoid trying because if they try and fail, then they go into a state of mind where they associate and then they are a failure. But just because you failed doesn't make you a failure. You failed. You are not your failures. Your failure is outside of yourself. You are not your failure. Just like you are not your success. It goes both ways. And it's easy to get define yourself by your successes or failures, to pigeonhole yourself, well, I'm a failure, I'm a success. And then when you fail and you're a success, you feel like, what's happening? There's an identity conflict. What if you just didn't associate it with either? I don't know what the middle ground is. What if you were just you? Like what, what if you were just the type of person who kept moving, kept moving forward regardless? What if you were the type of person who didn't get too high or didn't get too low? but stayed focused and kept incrementally moving forward regardless of the circumstances and the challenges, the tribulations and the successes that occur to them. All of it. What if they just kept moving forward? Kept moving. That's how I partly identify myself. Just stay on the path. Stay on the path. I'm the type of person who's going to stay on the path. If I experience a failure, I am not the failure. I'm not gonna create an ideological belief, an ideological identity association with my failures or my successes. And this can be tricky, particularly of the successes. You know, maybe you're a successful actor, musician listening to this, and you identify as that guy or girl. But aren't you more than that? Who were you before that? Who are you outside of that? Maybe you work at a fast food outlet. You gotta be careful about how you identify yourself because society doesn't particularly look up to people who work as a cleaner, or as like those hard, just repetitive, monotonous, low paying, but critically important jobs. You're the, you're the assistant. You're the hospitality worker. You're the guy who brings the coffee. You're the guy who makes the fries in the back. You're the, you're the girl who sweeps the floors. Like you're such an important cog in the wheel that if all these important co these all these, they're small cogs, but all of the important cogs disappeared, we'd be screwed. Who would pick up our, our rubbish, our trash from my Americans? Who would pick up our trash and rubbish from the curb? Are you gonna get up at 4 a.m.? Get into a stinking truck? 
for the next five, six hours and go start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop st- about 3,000 times every morning for five years? Are you going to do that? Because someone is, someone does every day all across the world and they're not you. And pro- maybe there's one or two out there watching this. That is you. But you are more than that. So this is a bit of a little bit of tangent or sidebar on not identifying with what you do because you are not what you do. You are not what you do and you are not your success and you are not your failure. I'm of the belief it is more important about the type of person you want to be, the type of person you aim to be, what character traits you want to embody. That is where we should set our sight and perspective and focus on and associate an identity association with. I want to be the type of person that stays on the path regardless and stays focused, aware, and relatively unemotional, logical, rational, critically, and be able to critically think regardless of the chaos or prosperity around me. That doesn't have anything to do with what I do. That doesn't have anything to do with my success or my failure, how much money I have. That is who I am. That is about my behavior, not about an imagined reality of the constructs of society we have created. Shout out to those who understand the term imagined reality who have watched the Sapiens series. It's easy to be in motion, still think we're making progress. Motion makes you feel like you're getting something done, but really you're just preparing to get something done. When preparation becomes a form of procrastination, you need to change something. You don't want to be merely planning, you want to be practicing. If you want to master a new skill or habit, the key is to prioritize repetition and consistency over perfection. A lot of us get stuck in this idea of attaining perfection. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is, and I don't know how it is. If you focus on perfecting the thing, then you actually give yourself an excuse to never finish the thing because you can technically, why can't you keep going to perfect it? When's the sculpture going to be done? When's the music piece going to be done? Kanye West's uh, track power on my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is said to have over a thousand man hours in it. It was reiterated a huge number of times. He tried to get that track perfect. I don't know if he ever felt like it was. That album gets pretty damn close. So at some point, is your creativity pushing you towards excellence or is it pushing you towards procrastination? Could the task and be actually done by now? Could you actually just do the thing you said you wanted to do? Do you really need to wait another day? Probably not. If you really looked at the situation, you probably don't need more information. You probably could make it work with the money you have and the resources you have. It's probably better you start yesterday. But you can't start yesterday, so the best time to start is right now. If you want to master a new skill or habit, the key is prioritizing repetition and consistency over perfection. You don't always need to map out every detail of a new skill and habit that you want to do. You just need to do it. You need high frequency, you need high attentional focus and deliberateness, you need time, you need quality sleep for memory consolidation. And then the skill and habit and the task project that you're working to refine and continue to improve, you will make progress on even faster if you're ticking all those boxes. So that's law three, make it easy. Walk slowly but never backward. Action versus motion, what I think is a really important concept and topic in how we trick ourselves into thinking we're being productive when we're really just mistaking activity for achievement. Next video and chapter will be on the law of least effort and how to achieve more with less, work smarter instead of always having to work harder. You can listen to all these on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, at Alexander Emanuel or podcast platforms. I've put out a whole bunch of other video book analysis series on some of the most profound books that I've ever read. Links are in the description all across the channel at Alexander Emanuel. If you guys want to purchase the book, link is also below. All of the book links are affiliate. 
if they're still working. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.